Okay. Uh, see if anybody is going to migrate over this way. All right, so um, here's the prayer stream, as you can see by the title, Facebook edition. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on on YouTube, but um, they, they made some changes, and I guess I wasn't prepared for them because I could not get the live stream to work for the life of me. But here I am. We're just going to roll with the punches. Here we are, first First prayer stream on Facebook Live. You are witnessing history, people. Uh, <laughs> this is me dealing with the emotions and frustrations um, of technology not working. And I am just trying to roll with the punches. Not get angry, not get upset. And um, just take it for what it is. It is an adventure. It is an adventure each and every day. <laughs> so, um... Let us move in. Uh, for those of you that maybe haven't watched the prayer stream before, it's something that we've been doing on YouTube, and the reason why I did it on YouTube is because of the chat box, but I guess it works just fine here because you can talk with me in the chat box. Let me see. There's got to be a way that I can see this, right, while I'm streaming. Um, I don't know. Mom, I see you're watching. Maybe put something in the chat box and uh, see if it pops up. I'm not seeing it right now, which is weird because I'm on this massive iPad. Um, anyways, so um, normally we do this on YouTube and uh, allow you to send in your uh, prayer request and we pray for them. But before that, just have a little bit of a devotional thought, talk about some things. And so, since it wasn't working on YouTube, we have migrated to Facebook, and here we are. So, I want to talk about this book. Um, most versions of this do not look as ratty as mine does. <laughs> and it's also very colorful on the inside. Um, well, well used. Uh, but this Bible holds a place dear to my heart um, because... After being out of the church and away from Jesus for a number of years, my, um, my grandmother Mimi gave this to me when I came back, and um, I've had it ever since. Uh, thought I lost it on numerous occasions, but it always seems to come back. So anyways, I want to talk a little bit about the Bible. There are a lot of different thoughts, a lot of different opinions out there um, on what the Bible is, what the Bible is for, what it's about. Um, my thoughts uh, very succinctly is I, I believe that we should come to the scriptures to be changed, not just to amass information. We should come to the scriptures to be changed, not just to amass information information. I am, I'll share a little bit about why I believe that is the case, but I think that we, we don't really need to look much further than 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Uh, now I have the hiccups. What a day. <laughs> um, so let me pull up, I had quotes ready on my iPad, but now I'm on my iPad, but luckily I've got them on my phone too. So a lot of people, um, and I lump myself into this because I have been guilty of it in the past, but oftentimes Christians, you see them using the Bible as a sword, um, and not in the biblical sense, more of like a, a, a weapon of destruction to tear people down. <laughs> and um, it's, it's not just a metal sword, but it is a very moldable and pliable sword, and Christians can take a Bible verse and force it to mean whatever fits their preconceived notions or their prior ideas. And I don't think that is a healthy way to use the Bible. 
this quote, I think, is a perfect illustration of that. It says, he uses the Bible like a drunk uses a lamppost for support rather than illumination. He uses the Bible like a drunk uses a lamppost for support rather than illumination. And oftentimes that's what we do. We come to the Bible to find support for our beliefs. We come to the Bible to find support uh, for our preconceived notions, our own crazy, at times, ideas. And um, I, I believe that we are much better off coming to the Bible for illumination so that we can better see better get through life, better hear a message that God might have for us. And so um, let's go to those verses there. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Uh, these, these scriptures often come up when people are talking about the Bible, what it is, what it isn't. So what we read there is, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, amen and is profitable for doctrine. And oftentimes, Christians stop right there. But the verse doesn't stop right there. It's more, the Bible is more than just amassing information. It's more than just finding doctrine. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God is in, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And then verse 17 carries the thought along that the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So that's going beyond simple head knowledge. That's going beyond simple doctrine, and it's getting into our life. This is where faith and, and works kiss. Um, so... If we are reading our Bible every single day and we are memorizing it and we are, um, you know, we, we, we know Bible trivia and we can quote different things, but it's not changing us. If we're not seeing the fruits of the Spirit coming about in our lives, then we are missing the point. And we might be reading the Bible, but we're not reading the Bible. <laughs> We're not reading it for all it's worth. Um, so, a couple thoughts on that. First, I, I uh, want to read a quote by Rob Bell. It says, when people say the Bible is boring, they're actually saying that because they haven't actually read it. Because if you actually read it and entered into the stories and the depth and the background and context and innuendo and hyperbole, the thing you will not be is bored. And I, I agree with that. You know, sometimes we, we come to the Bible just to amass knowledge. We, we, we do a very surface level reading of it. And it doesn't go much beyond that. And, um, you know, yeah, it'll get boring. Yeah, it'll get old. It'll be the same thing over and over. But God wants us to not only come to it and dig a little bit deeper, for the, the Spirit to illuminate our minds so that we can understand the things that we read and be able to apply them to our lives and, and have them affect us from the inside out. It's that double-edged sword, right? The, the, in the biblical sense of the thing, it should be cutting into us, changing us, helping us to realize the things in our lives that are out of whack, the things that are non-essential that we have made essential. The things that we, uh, you know, agree aren't good for us, yet we find ourselves giving all our time and putting all our effort into those things. Another quote I really like, it's from the late Rachel Held Evans. It says, the Apostle Paul wrote that scripture is inspired by God, and yet it is clear that the Bible has human handprints all over it. The Bible is perfection crammed into imperfect language. The otherworldly expressed in worldly ways. Holiness written down by unholy hands. Read by unholy eyes and processed by unholy brains. This is why we need the Holy Spirit, right? Filled with poetry and history, laws and letters, stories and genealogies, the Bible is commonly referred to as God's Word. A description that sounds so definitive and singular that it is almost misleading. 
In truth, the Bible represents a cacophony of voices. It is a text teeming with conflict and contrast, brimming with paradox, held together by creative tension. The Bible is not for the faint of heart. So, one final quote on that thought. Um, you know, going back to what I said initially, that I believe that we should be coming to the scriptures to be changed, not just simply to amass information. Dallas Willard said this, We don't believe something by merely saying we believe it, or even when we believe that we believe it. We believe something when we act that we believe it to be true. Wow. So... Talk is cheap, right? You can say all day that you believe something, that you believe in the power of Christ, that his spirit uh, can change you from the inside out. But do you really believe it? Are you experiencing those changes? Are you allowing him into your life to make those changes? If you truly believe something, you will live as if you believe it to be true. You won't just say it. It won't just be head knowledge. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not trashing head knowledge. You know, I, I, I read over a hundred books a year. You know, I, I enjoy literature. I enjoy reading. I enjoy gaining new knowledge and having philosophical conversations with different people. But what good is all the talk if it's not backed up with action? And so when we come to the Bible, I hope that we're not just coming here for answers. We're not just coming here to, to spar with our friends, to, to be able to prove someone wrong and prove ourselves right. I hope that we are allowing this Bible to change us. Because the same spirit that turned fishermen into mighty workers for God is the same spirit that is trying to take common, everyday people like you and me and make us into, as the Bible declares us uh, corporately to be, saints. <laughs> We're not that way on our own, <laughs> but by the grace of God, that is a promise. And I, I, I believe that, um, you know, something that Ellen White strongly believed in as well is that by beholding, we become changed. You know, the things that we put our minds to, the things that we focus on, are the things that we slowly become. The things that we value are the things that, um, you know, we, we fill our lives with. So, anywho, I hope that we value the Bible. I hope that we look at it as more than just a text that we can um, find information in. Because, you know, honestly... There are many Bible scholars that know the Bible better than you or I will ever know it in terms of knowing where things are, having things memorized, yet they're atheists. There are many Bible scholars that are atheists, and they know the Bible inside and out, backwards and forwards, but it has no power in their life. They haven't experienced any change. And so when we come to the Bible, yes, there's information in there. Yes, there's doctrine in there. But beyond that, I hope that we are prayerfully inviting the Holy Spirit to um, come into our lives and make whatever changes are necessary so that behold, by beholding that word, we can be changed into the likeness of Christ. All right, so... Um, I looked at the Google Voice account, didn't see any prayer requests there. So let us go ahead and pray, and we will wrap up this prayer stream, Facebook Live edition. <laughs> and hopefully um, I can get with the AV guys and we can figure out what the issue was on YouTube and get it sorted out for next week. So let us pray. Our loving, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for loving us in spite of ourselves. And we thank you for giving us the Bible, that in the Bible we can learn about you. In the Bible we can come to know Jesus, um, know his story, know the narrative that he laid out for us, and, and come to realize that we are essential in your eyes. 
that you loved us so much that you were willing to die in our place. Lord, as we continue with our Sabbath school studies, going through the quarterly, and we're looking at the Bible, um, may we not just look at it as any other book, just some random book full of facts and information and doctrine and rules, but may we realize that there is power in it, that it is a, as we, we term it, a, a living book, that it has been God-breathed, as it says in the Greek, and that you want to breathe life into our souls through it. Lord, may we come to the Bible in hopes that we will be changed. May we come to the Bible in a humble state, realizing we don't have all the answers, but allowing your Holy Spirit to guide us as we study. Lord, as we are looking ahead to the future, and it seems like life in the U.S. is going to start slowly changing um, getting back to normal, as they call it. I pray that our spiritual lives will not just go back to normal. I hope that we will all use this opportunity to put our lives into perspective, to seek after you in a way that we've never seeked before, to grow closer to you, and to keep that up when the quarantines are lifted, when the pandemic has ended, May our relationship with you not grow stagnant. May we not get used to things, but may we always be seeking for more illumination, more light, more understanding, and more growth in Christ as we allow him to make the changes necessary in our lives. Lord, I continue to pray for all of our healthcare workers that are serving on the front lines. I ask that you would keep them healthy, that you would keep them safe. And Lord, for those of us that might be getting back into the world in the next few weeks, I, I pray that we would continue to be cautious, that we would continue to be safe, and that we would continue to think of others before ourselves. Lord, we look forward to that day when we will see Jesus coming in the clouds and we will have no more worries about sin or pandemics, viruses, but Lord, in the meantime, help us to keep that blessed hope burning in our hearts as we do our best through your spirit to bring hope and encouragement and love into this world. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so that is it. That is the Prayer Stream Facebook Live edition. I'm going to end the video here, and once it has rendered, it will there then be on our Facebook page for your viewing pleasures, and uh, will be uploaded to YouTube shortly thereafter. So I pray that you all have a good Wednesday evening, and I pray that your faith stays strong, and you remember that God's power can never be quarantined.